hope you've had a, a great week, a strong week in following the Lord and beginning to learn how to use the uh, Lord's Prayer as a tool of intimacy in your life and also as a weapon for standing strong in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, every single day of our lives. We're going to deal with the practical faithfulness, the pragmatic faithfulness of the God of all creation. One of the uh, amazing things of walking in relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is how much um, God, our Father, cares for and will provide for every single need in every detail of our lives. There is such freedom and liberation and you will continue to experience deeper and deeper movements of freedom and liberation in your life as you trust uh, with greater uh, and, and deeper levels uh, the faithfulness of God in absolutely every area of your life. So last week we, we prayed, let your kingdom come and your will be done, understanding that we live in a war between two kingdoms, but that we believe in a God who has a very specific will for our lives. And so we've talked about specifics and we're gonna to continue to talk about specifics as we move through the Lord's Prayer, that God has a very specific will for your life, that to walk with Him, to be in relationship with Him, is to surrender your life. And part of surrendering your life is surrendering your will the decisions that you want to make in your life, both in the big picture uh, of your life and then also in the daily picture of your life. So every day I get up believing that this is the day that the Lord has made and He has a will for my life in this day. And so I'm learning to release that will in the day to my Father so that His perfect will can be accomplished in my life as it is in heaven. As I do that, as you genuinely begin to pray and live out the will of God in your life, you are going to deal with fear. You cannot follow the will of God and not be confronted by your fear, our fear of how God is going to provide if I follow his will. Uh, in our lives outside of the will of God, when we live our lives according to our will, we understand how to find and seek and get provision. Uh, if I want to live my will, I'm going to go be a lawyer or an engineer or a professor or uh, a pastor. And, and through that, I'm going to make a certain living, a uh, certain wage. And through that wage, I'm going to be provided for. Uh, that's the mechanism of provision that we depend on uh, in our lives. But when we walk in the will of God, that equation doesn't work. Uh, in the will of God, our confidence and our provision now comes directly from the hand of God himself so that we are liberated as followers of Jesus from the fear of having or not having, from losing or gaining. We're liberated from that and delivered into this beautiful, constant, unstoppable place of the provisional hand of God in our lives. It is powerful, it is amazing, it is wonderful, but it is, it is difficult uh, to walk in that. It is, it, is, it is a challenge as the ways that we have lived our lives and been raised get confronted. And in every single area of my life, am I really truly depending every single day on the faithfulness of God in our lives, in my life. And this is what Jesus brings us to in the Lord's Prayer as he moves from praying, let your kingdom come, your will be done, to give us this day our daily bread. Uh, you will know that you are walking in the will of God for your life in part when give us this day our daily bread becomes a regular part, a necessary part of your prayer life. Uh, God, I am here in your will. If you don't provide, I will not have. Uh, that, that's not a comfortable place to be in the beginning, but it becomes the most powerful place you can be as you learn to trust more and more and more and rely and depend on the faithfulness of God in your life. So we pray every day as we get up, give us this day our daily bread, seeking to learn dependence on Him. And if you will remember, this is the first lesson, the provisional hand of God is the first lesson that God had for the nation of Israel when God birthed them out of Egypt. So you will remember they lived in slavery 200 to 400 years uh, under Egyptian rule. And then God raised up Moses and Moses went to Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh said no. And the, the plagues came and eventually Israel was birthed out from underneath uh, the, the, the nation of Egypt. And while they were in slavery, they understood how provision worked. Uh, they knew where their daily bread was going to come from and how they were going to get it. 
when God birthed them out of the nation of Egypt and they began walking in the wilderness, now they're walking according to the will of God, but they don't have any idea how provision works. And so three days out, what are the Israelites doing? They're complaining, they're whining, they're confused, they're dismayed, they're dispirited, and they're taking it out on Moses, their leader, and they're going to Moses and they, 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 they say to Moses, it would be better for us if we were back in Egypt living in the old way because at least then we knew where provision was going to come from. It was so important to them that they have certainty or confidence in how they were going to get provided for that they were saying to Moses, we would rather go back into slavery because at least in slavery we knew how provision was going to work. But God had other plans. God wanted to teach them that there is a completely, totally, wholly different way of living and that's a life not dependent on any foreign government or not dependent on government or not dependent on any world system, but completely, totally dependent on the supernatural hand of God and his ability to provide. So what did God do with the nation of Israel? He began to feed them miraculously. With a, with a, he led them with a cloud by day and a fire by night. He uh, uh, brought manna up from the ground. He brought uh, quail in, in unbelievable quantities. And the Israelites very slowly began to learn, if we will learn to trust God's provision in our lives, he will give us this day our daily bread. The way that God provides for us is not bound by any earthly formula. God will provide for you supernaturally as he did in the wilderness with the Israelites and the manna and the quail and the other ways that water out of a rock supernatural ways so that the Israelites would learn that God is providentially and powerfully able to do things in the spirit that they could never do of themselves in the physical. It was a very, very difficult lesson for the Israelites to learn and it is a very, very difficult lesson for us to learn that in the, in the supernatural, in this spiritual place that we've been talking about, the kingdom of God, the reality of God, in that supernatural spiritual place, we believe that that God who exists is actively, effectually at work in our lives. So I'm freed up from feeling bound by a job. I'm afraid of my job of really standing for the Lord and being faithful to God because if I do that, I may lose my job. And if I lose my job, I lose my paycheck. If I lose my paycheck, I won't be able to provide. When I moved from that line of thinking into a position of no matter what happens to me, my Father will be faithful to provide, that my God does not need a paycheck to provide for me. Now I'm freed up. I can live faithfully to the Lord in all circumstances without fear of a boss or a marketplace or a stock market, uh, without any fear of how those things may affect me because no matter what happens, I can walk according to the faithful provision of God in my life. Now it's, it's, it's important to understand that the provision of God in our lives, the bread of God, is always found, always found in the will of God. Jesus puts these things in order on purpose. I pray your kingdom come, your will be done. Now, as I'm walking out your will, there is your bread. If, if my heart is not your will be done, I have no right to pray for bread. But if my heart is your will be done and I'm being obedient to the will of God in my life, then and only then do I have a right to claim the bread of God in my life. In the same way, as I walk out the will of God for my life, I should walk it out with expectation, with eager expectation, that as I walk out the will of God, there will be the bread of God. And that's where it becomes exciting, that Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm no longer bound by worldly means of provision. I'm freed up from that in the name of Jesus so that I can live your will, whatever your will is for my life, whatever your will is for my life, I can live it recklessly, I can live it powerfully, I can live it freely without concern about whether or not you're gonna take care of me because wherever the will of God is, that's where the bread of God is. And as your child, as your son, your daughter, I can come to you because you are my father and come to you and ask you, God, give me this day my daily bread. And according to your word, according to the teaching of Jesus himself, according to the way that Jesus lived his life himself, you will provide. And we're learning to pray, as we've already talked about, in very specific ways. So we're not praying this generically. And let me, let me please encourage you to learn to pray specifically, 
move beyond generics. Oh, God, bless me today. Oh, God, love me today. What are the specific things that you're dealing with? What are the specific ways that you're seeking the will of God for your life? What are the specific ways that you can crowd and say, my Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. What are the specific ways that you're trying to glorify God? And as we come to give us this day our daily bread, what are the specific ways that you need God to provide for you in your life? The, the more specific you pray, the easier it will be for you to see how he answers. The more generic you pray, God bless me, at the end of the day, well, did God bless you? Well, I don't really know. But if I'm praying God provide money for me today, provide food for me today, provide sustenance for me today in very specific ways, then at the end of the day, I'm able to see very clearly whether or not God moved in that prayer or how it was that God moved in that prayer. So as you allow God, you got to give yourself a break in this. It's just going to be a tough lesson. Rest in the Lord and allow our Father who is in heaven to show you his faithfulness. And then as you continue to rest and he continues to, do, continues to show over time, he's going to transition you and transform you to become a person who lives completely, beautifully, and wonderfully dependent on the faithful provision of God for your life. And then you'll be in this fantastic position where you can share that with other people and train them to do the same thing as God has trained you. Hope you have a great session. May the Lord God, even right now, even today or tomorrow, as you have need for bread in your life, that you will see the faithful hand of God take care of you because he is your father and you are his children.